doing custom blender hair color. Custom blender. There are a couple of other companies who are selling hair color online, but they're not doing the custom blending. Oh, okay. So were they after you launched, they came to the space? Yeah, or? they came to the space. So like and how do you feel when you saw somebody tell you, hey, we have a kind of competitor now? You always get upset about that, but then ultimately like competition is what makes you improve your own product so that you keep doing better. Uh, I think in our case, we are, we were the only company that hair color online. You don't have that many people that are pushing people to think buying hair color online, buying hair color outside of the retail, like the drugstore. So I think right now we are benefiting from the fact that there are, there are more and more people thinking about, okay, I don't have to buy my hair color at the drugstore. I can buy something better if I go online. So your competitor is the drugstore or the hair salon? Both, both, but to the most degree, like really, like two thirds of our clients are people who are buying box color and upgrading to buying our product. Now, scaling—that's the key word here because you launch something, but you never know when you're gonna get to the, let's say, break-even point mm -hmm. and then to become profitable. Correct. So, how long did it take you to scale it, or maybe you are still in the process? I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, we're still are some more compared to the upside. Uh, so we are keep we keep investing into more growth for the business. So in our case, in the history of so we launched we launch in, in September two thousand and ten. At the very beginning we were just trying to see what happens like with with our what's the feedback, the retention rate of meaning how many people come back for a second, right. third, fourth application, um, where are our best clients coming from? What do our best clients have in common? What kind of marketing message is resonating the most? So it was a little bit of learning. What kind of instructional changes do we have to make? What kind of algorithm changes do we have to 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 have for our clients to improve the experience? So at the beginning, we were not spending that much money in advertising. We were trying to just do a little bit more of the fit uh, and adjusting the product so that we could actually be more efficient once we started scaling up the advertising. So in your men in your your mental frame, in your mind, we are, there are people that want to see profit almost immediately. And I, I, I don't know, I have the perception that you have a real experience and for you to expect profit, profitability, for in your mind takes longer you need to be patient i think it depends on each business so in our case we were like really low volume at the beginning so we knew that we will be able to lower our cost by just um economies of scale once we once we had more clients so what used to cost us 10 now it's costing us five just because we're buying a lot more volume so that what was going to come with time the, the the cost savings based on on So at the beginning, we were trying to just make sure, in our case, that we were coming with the best possible product. So that was really like the first year was, how can we improve the product? Because we, we had the best product. And we, we did the unit economics about how much are we making per product. Uh, in our case, custom color or hair color is something that it lends itself very well for a subscription service. Because then if your hair grows, you have to keep on dyeing it every six weeks. So um, we knew that it's not only about making money in the first transaction. It was really making sure that the client was happy in the first transaction so that they could keep coming back. That's so smart. So, But each, different, each business is different. Yeah, yeah, but that's so smart because one of the problems in the e-commerce industry is the retention and returns, you know, both of them. So that takes a lot of money and that's where scaling and the critical mass comes To, to the conversation, you know, and for that, I think that you have to put a lot of hours to make the, 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 the math, the calculate, the estimate, the calculation. Okay. This is our point here. How are we going to get there? What's going to cost us, you know, an estimate cost to get to that point. And, you know, that's how you, that's how did you put it together? Yeah. And then I think, um, it was learning the unit economics of our particular business. So when, when we have in our case, a subscription business, you start trying to figure out, okay, what's going to be your, your lifetime value? How many reorders are you going to have from a client? How much are you making for every one of those reorders? 
So in our case, we can spend money to acquire a new client, to do advertising to acquire a new client, and we could be losing money on the first transaction, but then we know that we're going to have a future cash flow because that client will be keep on ordering. Because in the retention in factor. In the retention factor because of the future future business that you will get. So in our case, we have a lot of metrics that speak to that, and we have like a lot of history. So we could have a very positive our return on, on the marketing investment, knowing that we have the history of how much money right. we'll make back. But at the beginning, in a short period of time, it looks like a loss. But then right. once, you, once you extend your horizon, then it's actually very, very well worth having those losses. It's yeah. an investment. Yeah, and, and you are in an environment that, which is very difficult because you are dealing with an emotional perception of acceptance. So the person actually color uh, her hair, let's say hair, because she's expecting to have some results in terms of one affirmation of herself, uh, self-esteem, but also social uh, uh, reception. So how the people see her and how is she perceived and if she is in a relation, you know, all with that implies. So you are dealing with a very sensitive product. Completely. Uh, we, we are, actually, our product is permanent hair color. So the word permanent implies that, like, if it's not the right color, then it's hard to change it. So in our case, like, people have been making mistakes left and right with the box color um, for so many different reasons. That They may choose something that's not right for them. Even if they choose something that is probably close enough, it's just only close enough. It's not perfect. Uh, in our case, like, you can submit a picture of yourself you fill out all these questions that are very simple to answer questions, and then a colorist will see that. And then you can go online to someone.com and try this. You can actually say that you are a light blonde that wants to go pitch black, and somebody will tell you, are you sure you want to do this? Because once you go that way, it's hard to go back. Right. So compared to the box color experience, like nobody's stopping you from buying something that then is going to be very hard to reverse. So in our case, we have like put a lot of customer service in a, in a very simple way so that you can have an online experience with a brand that is really replicating a salon service experience by making sure that it's the right formula for you, that if you want to make a tweak, we can just adjust your color. If you, have, if you need help, like knowing how to apply your color, then we will just have a team of people and content we we have a lot of content from videos, articles that tell you how to like do wow. a better hair color. And ultimately, that's how we have been. We are the only brand has won in the industry, uh, in the beauty industry. Allure, Allure magazine is the most renowned consumer magazine within the beauty world. Sure. We are the hair color brand that has won the best of beauty the most times. We have won that award four times. Um, and we're pretty really proud of that and that's just because of the, how the, the service works right I mean it, you said it in a so uh, easy way in terms of simple but I mean I can read in between uh, words that is a lot of work a lot of details sensitivity how to take care of the client as I was mentioning before so that requires a lot of time uh, and going through the process and all that stuff. But I think the rewards are good. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm really, really happy. Very happy. So are you a successful entrepreneur at this point? I think you always want, I, I don't think you ever stop saying, oh, I'm successful. You always want to see how can I do it right. better. And then we keep on, like right now we, we are growing internationally as well. Uh, we are a team of about 125 people. So from four, you went to 125. And, and, and keeps on growing as we are right. expanding into other uh, markets and adding more features and services. So you are, a, uh, you are becoming a worldwide disruptor because actually you are disrupting an industry that is well, well established. Either exactly. you buy the box coloring or you go to the hair salon. So we created and a third option. You, you create a, th a third option, which is amazing. We create a third option and then the premise of like like box hair color is very universal, so like it's something that happens everywhere. So, what kind of acceptance you have with your, your client? Because I mean, I can open a hair salon, and you know, I have hundred clients a week, 
And then out of them, 20 are going to be very unhappy, no tips, nothing, you know. But do you consider that the business model and the concept are successful? Yeah, completely. And that's why we can scale it up. If it wasn't, we, like, it's very hard to scale something that is not working. So um, in our case, that now we, 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 are, uh, we are shipping to the UK. We are opening, uh, we have had an office in London for the last four and a half years. And now we're actually, as of next week, we are setting up another custom manufacturing facility in London to service all of Europe. That's amazing. So that's, then, very, that's very interesting. Now, now you went to school and all your partners went to school, the founders? Yeah, we all went. So that helps, correct? I mean, to me, education uh, is quite important. So I don't think that maybe I shouldn't say, I mean, anybody, but I think that education facilitate the, co the development of this concept, correct? I mean, because an idea, I can have an idea, but in order to make it happen, I need to have the fundamentals of the process, the business, how to exec, how to execute the business, and all that. Correct? Did you did you put together a business plan? We put together a business plan. Um, I have to say, I, I I went to business school, but one of my main partners didn't go to business school, and he's incredible business savvy. So. So it was instant. Some people have it by instinct, some people... But at the same time, there are things that you... That it can never hurt to have education. Right. How do you keep the balance and the harmony in between the partners, the founders? I mean, we have been working together for a long time. Uh, so... What's the secret for, you know, keeping together? I think uh, just um, realizing that everybody needs each other. That everybody has their own strengths kind of like trying to figure out who's leading with what aspects, understanding that, uh, trying to figure out how two brains are better than one kind of concept, like trying to see you may be thinking about an idea that makes total sense for you, but then it's good to, to hear your ideas being challenged. Right. So for that, you need to be humble and you need to be detached, you know, because you put your idea on the table and then your partner, your friend, starting to challenge your concept. And if you are too attached to it, I mean, I don't think that relation is going to go forward very long. I completely agree. So you need to be detached and humble. And open-minded. Open-minded, you know, which is, you know, you, you are not, you don't own the truth. Yeah, and then I think it's just like, you know that you're never going to be perfect every single time. Just try to take like okay. I think what what about this idea? And then you right. don't hear good validation or potential challenges to your concept. Right. I, I'm uh, going deep into this because many of the entrepreneurs that I've been talking to they had issues with partners, and you know they started with someone or a couple of them, and then something went wrong and said, "Wow, well, that was my worst mistake ever," and all that stuff. That's why I'm kind of. Uh, going deeper into this conversation about partners and how to manage that relation. Uh, and I think it's a very important topic. Um, in our case, it's been since the pretty much like 1999, 2000 that we have been working together. So, but I, I know what you're saying. A lot of people have a lot of problems. Right. Um, so in our case, we have been very functional. So something else that I wanted to ask you What's success for you in life? I don't measure success in terms of monetary value. I think about are you doing something that's rewarding, that you see a purpose. Um, I place a lot of importance in my own family and my kids' upbringing. So to me, success will be that I can be at some point making sure that I raise good kids uh, more than building a big company. So, But I do enjoy, I'm an engineer, I enjoy building things. I enjoy finding ways of solving challenges. In this case, it happens to be that, like, finding the how can you make box hair color significantly better. Right. It's something that, without being a hairstylist, I still find a lot of passion for solving that. So many elements involved, so, right? Exactly, because I, I, I love, like, a, like all, all of the things that have to do with an e-commerce business. I love, like, the manufacturing process. Uh, 
and I love sol sol using different tools to solve a challenge. So I get to do all of that with uh, eSalon. The e-commerce by itself is a whole universe. 